keep the record of this last decade, it has been a decade of development. We've seen 50,000 people in ARVs in 2002 to more than 3 million today in sub-Saharan Africa, more than uh, 200 million bed nets as a direct result of the Glen Eagles commitment. And again, bed nets are not an ultimate outcome, but uh, malaria deaths cut in half in a number of countries, Zambia, Ethiopia, Rwanda, there's a lot to be said for that. We clearly believe the last five years, the period since Glen Eagles, have seen historic increases uh, in aid flows and in uh, debt cancellation to Africa, and that there's a lot to show for it. In addition to kind of quantifying and measuring the successes that we're having, that we have to remind our uh, constituents that Africa matters to us. But what matters more even than Africa is our values in the world matter. And that if we retreat from Africa, there are other global interests that will have long-term influence, not just on how African economies develop or underdevelop again, but also what kind of governing systems they have. You know, what will be the liberties that the people in Africa enjoy if they do? Will there be religious freedom? I mean, there are lots of ways to cut it on why we should continue to press an agenda in Africa. And where we need to focus our aid going forward is how do we best support Africans in achieving their own economic development, in becoming active participants in a regional and global trading system, in receiving and making good use of foreign investment, uh, in creating jobs on their own. Um, and that, I think, is the big challenge for, uh, for our uh, foreign assistance, recognizing that we still have an important role to play in just uh, paying for drugs, as we are uh, to deal with the AIDS pandemic. Jennifer Cook with CSIS. Just building on that last point, it, it's a bit of a, the dilemma, I think, for the advocacy community and for Congress, um, the idea of turning to African-led uh, uh, objectives. Um, a part of the success of PEPFAR, and I think the Glen Eagles, was the sense of urgency, uh, the quick results that uh, access to ARVs provided, kind of the Lazarus effect and so forth. Now we're moving to a stage when we're thinking we've got to get past these kind of emergency responses. We have to build long-term capacities, investments in research and training and systems and so forth. That's very hard to measure over the long term. It's hard to put in a brochure, uh, you know, that the impact. And, and I think for, for one and for Congress, too, how do you convince people yeah. to make these long-term investments that don't pay off in five years yeah. or two years, but maybe in 10 years, but are, are going to be the thing that counts for sustainability for African ownership and, and so forth down the line? And that I, will be, that's I share your burden. We, uh, our, our leader, uh, co-founder, co calls this the search for the melody line. It was not hard to say um, as 2000 approached, uh, there's a jubilee year. I mean, most of you know uh, the, the impetus for debt relief. There was a, a time-limited effort. Uh, and then it was two pills can save a life. There's an emergency going on in Africa. That was the AIDS crisis. Um, I, I don't know if I should say we're searching for the next one because I just don't know if it's realistic uh, or honest to try to tell people that there's some uh, magic bullet they need to rally around that's going to get this all solved. And that, that is the challenge to all of us in the advocacy community. This is complicated. And it's not just about aid. It's about leadership within those countries. It's about none of us believe we can get, get where we want to go without private sector capital and job creation. Everybody knows that it's all these things coming together. It's a complicated story to tell. But I think there is something in there of an Africa rising and leading its own way, this impatient generation of young Africans who are really hungry to take charge of their own future, uh, frustrated with a lot of the, frustrated in some cases with foreign aid, frustrated with their own leaders. And I think there's a very positive story to tell about us um, responding to that and supporting that. And of course, as advocates, you always need to let people know that progress is being made, and it is. Mm -hmm.